Now let's see. Oh, the House has passed the HEROES Act, H.R. 6800, the latest proposal for government assistance in the COVID crisis. Excellent! I'm sure that they've crafted a nice, short, clean bill. 1,815 pages. Hmm. Well, it looks like I've got some reading to do. And I'll certainly have some roasted opinions about it. I'm a big fan of clarity in government. I think that anyone who introduces a bill for consideration in Congress needs to read the entire bill out loud to whichever of the two houses it's being introduced in. Call me crazy, but I bet that no bill but an annual appropriations bill would be longer than 100 pages if that was done. I think all members of that house should have to sit through the entire reading, too. Brevity is the soul of wit, they say, and the shorter the bill, the more clarity there will be about it. Over 1,800 pages of legislation in a single bill makes me wonder what's hidden in it. So I looked. The first thing that I noticed was an extension of bailout loans to 501c organizations. Now 501c organizations are nonprofit organizations. Those organizations evidently are hard hit, just like the rest of us. And Congress wants to help. So they've set aside a big chunk of money for bailout loans to 501c organizations exempting only government-owned corporations like Freddie Mac. Now that's interesting because these bailouts would apply to all sorts of tax-exempt organizations. 501c4 groups are political education groups. 501c5 groups are labor unions. Most of the categories under 501c are, in fact, lobbyists. The HEROES Act will provide bailout funds to AARP, the NRA, the ACLU, and many other organizations which make campaign donations. At least some of that bailout money will therefore wind up flowing back into campaign funds and super PACs. To me, it doesn't matter if you agree with the positions or not. No money appropriated by Congress should return as a campaign donation to members of Congress. That portion of the bill is funding all right for something that's not quite rain and not quite snow either. I wonder what that is. Flip to page 22, and there's $540 billion in coronavirus state fiscal relief funds in this bill. Specifically, that's $2 billion for each state and the District of Columbia, plus $20 billion for the five territories, plus $20 billion for tribal governments, plus $150 billion allocated based on population, plus $49 billion allocated based on COVID infection rates, plus $199 billion allocated based on the number of seasonally adjusted unemployed people. Arkansas, the state where I live and which has not experienced a big shutdown, would receive over $4.1 billion if my calculations are correct. That's interesting because the total state budget is only $29 billion, and the state of Arkansas would receive one of the smallest payments amongst the states. As if that's not enough, another $375 billion is earmarked to go to local governments, from county governments to metropolitan cities. Those two allocations total $915 billion for state and local governments, which would represent most of the annual budgets of some governments. Of course, in California, with its $214.8 billion annual budget, they will receive less than the $54 billion shortfall that they were facing before COVID. It's certainly less than the trillion dollars that California Governor Gavin Newsom just asked for. And yes, before some of you look at Wikipedia and mention that Arkansas has a budget of $31.8 billion, that's the 2018 total appropriation. The 2020 total appropriation is $29 billion. The amount that this bill would send to Arkansas comes close to doubling the general appropriations portion of the budget, which is $5.89 billion this year. I'm not sure that the Arkansas government can find enough ways to use an extra $4 billion, especially if it's earmarked for COVID-related expenses when there are more confirmed cases of COVID in Bristol County, Massachusetts than there are in the entire state of Arkansas. Flipping to page 43, we get to $25 billion for the Postal Service Fund. The USPS needs that money because they've been losing money for years. Why? 
because many businesses have realized that paper flyers and other junk mail gives them a much lower rate of return on investment than advertising on the internet. Because routine communications are conducted by email all the time now, and not snail mail. Because even documents which must have a good old-fashioned handwritten signature in front of a notary public are often emailed, printed out, signed, sealed, and scanned back into the computer to be sent back electronically. That's fewer pieces of mail, and therefore fewer stamps, fewer certified mail fees, fewer insured mail fees, and so on. COVID has hit the USPS too, but does it really need $25 billion to handle the COVID crisis? FEMA only gets $1.3 billion on page 46. Surely the necessary additional funding for the response to the COVID disaster by the U.S. Postal Service should be less than the necessary additional funding for the federal agency responsible for disaster response nationwide, right? On page 21, there's an extra $75 billion to plus up the homeowner assistance portion of the COVID-19 HERO Act. Um, isn't that what all of the existing financial provisions in the HERO Act, like stimulus checks and enhanced unemployment, are meant to do? Flip back to page 35, and there's $3.6 billion for the Election Assistance Commission. That money includes provisos for vote by mail on page 1455, including ballot harvesting and on page 1473, a proviso that would prevent states from enforcing a voter ID law. So political parties, PACs, and super PACs could submit a bunch of ballots at once without any requirement to prove that the registered voters completed those ballots. And any state which wants to perform a basic verification check on those ballots can go suck it. On page 96, there's over $10 billion for institutes of higher education to finance their COVID responses. Mind you, that's also for institutes which have billions of dollars in their endowments. Right there on page 101, there's $7 billion earmarked for private, non-profit institutions like Harvard. Check if you don't believe me. Harvard has almost twice as much money in their endowment as this bill earmarks to help universities like them. Why do they need financial help again? On page 118, there's $15 billion for highway infrastructure programs. That might make sense if it was being spent on extra cleaning for public transportation, but there's a separate $15.75 billion specifically for public transportation on page 122. Help me out here. What do road repairs have to do with COVID response again? On page 136, there's $100 billion earmarked for emergency rental assistance. Like with homeowner assistance, I thought that that's what the stimulus checks and enhanced unemployment were supposed to pay for. I guess that a special appropriation is needed for all the people who aren't paying their rent with the government-provided money intended to help them pay their rent. I wonder if that rental assistance will mean that the rent strikes will end. But the piece de resistance is a renewal of the stimulus checks. On page 160, this bill authorizes additional payments of $1,200 per person in the household, not to exceed five people. That's up to $6,000 per household. There is no requirement for the households to have lost income. This is simply giving away money to people that the U.S. government will then have to borrow to cover. That's hundreds of billions of dollars. The list that I just read off isn't everything either. There's more pork in this bill. Lots more. It's a textbook example of the worst that Congress can do when crafting a finance bill. It's a bill designed to be rejected by the Senate specifically so that the Democrats can claim that the Republicans want people to either die of COVID or become destitute. The Democrats are calling it a starting point. There isn't much in this bill that the country actually needs, though, and no country can afford to spend money like this. All total, the HEROES Act is at least $3 trillion. For comparison, the federal budget for 2020 is $4.7 trillion, and the House passed it in a hurry, too. Following the by now patented, we need to pass it to find out what's in it approach. The Senate GOP has vowed that the HEROES Act is dead on arrival. I hope that they're right. The solution to our problems isn't giveaways. We need to continue reopening the country instead, and let people get back to work before more companies declare bankruptcy. With common sense, allowing for continued control of the COVID outbreaks, we can do it. That's what we need, not H.R. 6800.